Hey guys, how are you? It's Jesus from Low Code Agency and today I'm gonna teach you on how to set up ratings and reviews for items that you have in your app. And actually we're gonna do that in the app where we have all the lessons I've made and that you can access for free. So we have our lessons here that you can add them as favorites, but then we have this rating thing that it doesn't make a lot of sense because it's user specific so whatever I have here it's only for me and then I cannot see nobody else can rate this so let's jump right in to our data tab to our lessons so we have profiles home and templates so let's open the sheet and add a new tab. So what we will do is we will have our reviews tab with a relation pointing back to our um, lessons. So this will be a very simple tutorial on how to set that up. And we will name this sheet uh, ratings. So we have here as our headers, we have email. There we go. We have rating. We have review. We have timestamp. And that's pretty much it. I always like to clean up my sheet so we won't have empty stuff. And this makes a lot of sense, especially when you have Zapier integrated into your app with email notifications and the trigger is in your row, then it's better to not have any empty rows. So we have the drop already, so we come back, we reload the sheet, and then the reviews, the rating step comes up here. So, we go to our lesson. So this is our list of items, right? And this is the list of items that we want our users to rate. So what we will do is we will create a form. So I'll use a form button that will be named Rate and Review. There we go. Oh, where is it? Here it is. Perfect. Then when I click this button, I will point the destination of this form will be the rating step. And then the only text entry component that we have is a review, but then we have the user's email address pointing to the email column. Then we have a rating up to five stars, and it will point to the rating column and that's, that's better and then we will have a timestamp which is also a special value which is the current date and time pointing to the timestamp and we need of course a unique ID or the name of the lesson so let's add here insert one right name of lesson otherwise we won't be able to make our relation work so we'll add the lesson name column and we'll point it to the name of lesson column that we just created so we can now we can fill out a form and say this tutorial was better expected then we'll make it four stars. So we already have some data in our rating step, right? So we have this. Now what we want to do is a relation between the lesson and the ratings. So I'll make a relation column here. Well, to ratings. And then point it, and this will be the lesson name. 
matches the value in ratings name of lesson and it will match multiple. Now we also want to show the users the average of those ratings. So we'll do a I think it's a roll up. Roll up pointing to the relation and the ratings value and it will calculate the count. Actually let's do a lookup first. So lookup rating. So this will be a lookup column that will point to the rating because we want to bring over all these numbers, right? All of the ratings that we get for each lesson. And then we'll add the rollup, which will make an average. So this will be a rollup column, summarize the values of lessons this is not working ratings for some reason this is a text column and we need to make it a color a number column so let's make a new one here and make it as a number then there we go so let's fix our form and the rating will go to oh now it's fixed now we can go back to our data so in our lessons tab we have the lookup and then let's do the rollup average and this will be a rollup column that summarizes the values of the rating by calculating the average and then we will do a template column rating template column that says average rating and then we will replace this z value for the rollup column there we go so if we go back to let's add another review And this will be a five star. Now we can delete this rating because it doesn't matter anymore. And then we can have, we can show that uh, template column that we just made as text. And this will point to template rating. And then we can bring that up, let's say, right under the video. So now we have the average rating. And then we can also have um, the reviews. So we can add an inline list pointing to the relation to readings. And then I'm going to make these cards with no image. And the header will be the rating. And the title will be let's make it like this the review there we go and let's hide those ratings then we can name this as reviews now the all, all the other thing I want to do is as soon as a user has rated and reviewed this lesson, then that user shouldn't be able to rate and review again. And in this app, it doesn't matter, but then when you have business listings or something else, then users can cheat, right? So, and they can uh, rate their business a hundred times with five stars to make the average higher. So we don't want to do that. So I want to hide this button for users that have already made a review. So what I have to do is use a lookup column pointing to those emails. So in our lessons tab, we already have a relation 
to the ratings. We have a lookup column pointing to the ratings, but then I want to do a lookup column pointing to the user email addresses. Email. So this will be a lookup column, and it will bring over the email addresses of the users that have rated this lesson. Now we just add a simple condition to this button, to the rate and review button on features. We set up a visibility condition where lookup email is not signing user. This will be rate. So now, as you can see here, I have the reviews down here, and the form button for me to add a review is missing. Now, if I go back to a different lesson, like lesson number three, then I can rate and review. So on the average rating, in this case, it's missing. We could even put an if then to see if it's missing, then we can hide this text or show something else. So let's just make sure that the visibility condition is working the right way. So rate and review. So this tutorial was simple. And then I'll give it five stars. Then I click submit. And then I have now the average rating is five. The review is here and the button for me to add uh, to rate and review has disappeared for my email. So that's the easy way to set this thing up. Uh, I hope you enjoy this and good luck.